With all the big games coming out this year, Marvel's Avengers kind of slipped under my radar. It wasn't until I saw two War Tables um, released online that I actually thought to myself, you know what, this game looks pretty cool and should definitely be added to my list. Now, in this video, I'm going to be going over 10 things that you should definitely know about this game if you're thinking about um, ordering or if you're just not sure whether you should get it or not. Now, because of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, everybody pretty much knows who the main Avengers are, even if they didn't follow the comics. But Crystal Dynamics decided to introduce a lesser known character. Kamala Khan is a Pakistani American and is Marvel's first Muslim character. She has shape-shifting abilities, which in the game she got from the events of A-Day, and her role is to reunite the Avengers to deal with the current threat. Now, from what I've seen from the trailers, she looks like a fun character to play as. And I've even seen that she can get into a combo with Ulk when she reaches her Invigan state. So yeah, this seems like a very interesting choice to go for, and um, yeah, it seems like it's going to be a lot of fun. The single player campaign progresses using hero missions. Now you play the first few missions as Kamala Khan but as you unlock each hero to reassemble the Avengers you'll get to play more hero missions for that character. Now once you've completed all of these that hero is unlocked and can be used in future missions and game modes which I'm going to cover later on in this video. Now, at launch, there are six confirmed Avengers that you'll get to play as. There's Kamala Khan, Thor, Hulk, Iron Man, Captain America, and Black Widow. Now, there will be post-launch content, <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to cover that later on in the video. There's a combo based combat system in this game which uses both ranged attacks and close attacks unique to the hero you're playing as. Now each hero has their own heroic abilities which are split into three categories, Assault, Support and Ultimate. Now with the Assault, these that charge the fastest and can be used to cut through multiple enemies, they can also be added to your combos. Support attacks, they're basically used to enhance co-op and team play by granting a buff to nearby teammates uh, that gives them a period of invulnerability. But the main one, the one that looks the most fun to use and definitely the coolest is the ultimate. Now these take the longest to charge but they unleash the most uh, devastating signature moves. Now so far we've seen Ulk's Thunderclap. Thor's Bifrost Ultimate which can bypass any um, unbreakable shields and the coolest most fun one so far Iron Man's Hulkbuster suit which just looks absolutely insane and I can't wait to use it. So it actually looks like there's a pretty deep level to customizing your characters in this game. Um, so as you progress through the game you earn skill points which can be used to unlock moves, combos and different versions of attacks from the, from the skill tree. Um, there's also gear. Now this looks similar to what you'd find in Destiny and The Division where um, the gear has different rarity so you have like common, uncommon, rare, epic, all that good stuff. Um, but they also come with additional perks. So for example, being able to shrink your enemy so they cause less damage or adding gamma radiation to Iron Man's laser attacks for a damage boost. Now gear won't change um, the character's appearance, but I mean you can see with Iron Man, when you add gamma radiation, it turns his lasers green. Um, now you can find gear in bunkers and bunkers are environmental team puzzles, which unlock gear and collectibles like comic books. Now, to change the character's appearance, there's cosmetics. Now, you can unlock costumes through missions, and there seems to be a large variety which can be taken from the game, and um, the different costume variations seem to be from the comic books. Uh, some costumes look really cool. I mean, I definitely want some of the ones for the Hulk, uh, but this game does have microtransactions, which brings me to the next point. Now, there are no game-changing microtransactions. All the microtransactions in this game are purely for cosmetics. Now, with a game like this and everything you're getting in the package, which I'm going to cover you know, towards the end of the video, um, 
this is really a small price to pay. I mean, I, I'm happy with this. Uh, because you get quite a lot for your money so if they want to make a little extra money from some cosmetics okay fine do you okay um, another thing there are no loot boxes for your microtransactions uh, oh sorry my bad no surprise mechanics so you'll know exactly what you're buying now hopefully they'll introduce a points currency um, similar to what they have in Activision with um, Modern Warfare for people like me who don't like spending money on you know to dress a virtual character but we'll have to see what happens now at the time of making this video there are three additional um, game modes available and I'm pretty sure they're going to announce some more game modes in the next um, war table but so far they've announced harm rooms which are basically training rooms for up to four players where you can fight waves of enemies and each wave gets a little bit harder so basically it's the game's horde mode okay um, you've got war zone which are optional side story missions for up to four players and unlike hero missions they're not focused around the progression of a specific hero um, but they can be used to earn loot uh, for your characters and you can't have duplicate characters though uh, so for example you can't have two hulks or two Kamala Khan's now sometimes you're happy just playing these games by yourself and you don't actually want other online players to play with you and let's face it sometimes you know matchmaking online the players you, that join your game can be pretty useless and they will just quit the game as soon as it starts getting difficult I, I hate these people with a passion so being able to play with bots is you know a nice touch but even better being able to play as characters, you know, with characters that you've already unlocked, along with the gear that you've unlocked for them, you know, that's what make thing, makes things different. Because I've played games in the past where the AI that you're given are just useless, you might as well just be playing with yourself. So, this is a nice little additional touch. And the other game type is drop zones. Now, you don't always have time to play games for hours and hours. I mean, everyone lives pretty busy lives these days. So drop zones are focused versions of war zones, allowing you to quickly complete objectives and are great for leveling up your character and unlocking gear. Just like most other games these days, Marvel's Avengers is designed to consume all your spare time. This game is massive. At launch, as well as all the hero missions, we're going to get 80 plus war zones, 50 plus enemy types, other missions that haven't been revealed yet, but I'm guessing they're probably going to be announced at the next war table. And that's just at launch. We're getting post launch content as well. We're going to get additional harm rooms and challenges which will be regularly updated and new heroes which will have their own missions. And that's all coming for free. When I heard they're gonna expand it, I thought they're gonna, you know, keep charging us for added DLCs, buy characters. No, no, no. They're updating this game for free. Don't know how long for, but if it's even for one year, all this extra content, it's it's definitely a great deal. And now let's get to the juicy bit. You see, I mentioned before that you're gonna get additional heroes post-launch. Now, they've already announced Orkai, which is coming to all platforms, but, I mean, I don't know why I didn't see this coming before. If you've got the game on PlayStation, we're also going to get Spider-Man. Now, this isn't the same Spider-Man from, um, from the Spider-Man PS4 game. This is Crystal Dynamics version of Spider-Man, but nevertheless, we're getting Spider-Man, and it's only coming on PS4. I am so glad that I pre-ordered this game on PS4. But I mean, yeah, it's a little it can it's a little petty by Sony, but you know, is what it is. They want people to buy it on their system, so they go do what they gotta do. Now it'll be interesting to see which other characters get released. I mean, I'm just gonna put it out there now. I wanna play as Blade, Wolverine, the Punisher, and Black Panther. If they could if they can release characters like that you know, um, monthly or every couple of months, man, this, this would be a great investment. I'll be playing this game until they run out of content to put on it. But let's just see what happens. This video was originally just going to be nine things you should know about the game. But while editing the video, I popped this article on comicbook.com. 
basically describing some of the extras that you're going to get if you own the PlayStation version because they're not just stopping with um, Spider-Man they're actually giving you more so I'll just read from the article when it comes to cosmetics PlayStation players will have 30 day exclusive access to a legendary outfit legendary emote epic takedown and nameplate for each superhero as they are released this is also for the six launch heroes okay so Basically, they did a similar thing with Red Dead Redemption 2 for their online mode, where they gave you some extras first online. I didn't play the online for that long, so I'm not sure what they all were. I, I remember getting something like an awesome and a gun, something like that. Uh, was nothing special. This seat actually seems more interesting. Okay, so in addition, we also have rewards for those with a PlayStation Plus subscription. For each superhero added to the game post-launch, Orkai included, all PS Plus members will receive a free bundle that contains a rare outfit, nameplate, and 100 credits to celebrate the addition of another Avenger to the roster. So with the 100 credits, um, I mentioned in an earlier point that they have like a point system for um, buying cosmetics. Yeah, that's basically what I was talking about. Okay, because they usually have um, ways of you earning free credits. So. So that's good to know it's going to be in the game. Okay? Um, at launch, we'll have a free bundle for Ms. Marvel available for PS Plus members to embiggen our love for Kamala. Yeah, Sony ain't playing no games, man. <laughs> so yeah, um, point number 10 is that, you know, there is some form of exclusivity on the game. I don't know if Microsoft will do the same thing. Probably won't, but, you know, <laughs> there you have it. So those are the 10 things you should know about this game. Um, I pre-ordered it on PlayStation 4, so I'll be playing the closed beta this weekend and we'll probably have some footage up over the weekend. So if you're interested in knowing more about the Avengers um, game, just hit the subscribe button and also if you found this video useful, hit the like button. And while you're here, why don't you check out some of my other videos? You might actually see something else that you're interested in. Alright, thanks for watching.